talking for the last little while. We talked about last week. Anybody know what we talked about last week in Sloganville? Where's the beef? And we had the little bitty lady on TV at the Wendy's commercial screaming, where's the beef? Remember that? Well, let's just, since, we're, uh, since our crowd is about as big as my family, let's have a family night tonight. And let's talk through what it's going to take to make our lives what it's supposed to be and make XL's life what it's supposed to be. Is that okay with y'all? Yeah, yeah. All right. Y'all have to talk back anyway, so I figure I ask some questions, and uh, then we'll all go home and meet for lunch tomorrow. So whatever y'all want to do. But guys, here's the deal for tonight. We talked about last week, we talked about the fact that many of us have given our lives to Christ, and we've not done anything with God since that point. And we talked about the fact we had two people baptized right up here. And we discussed the fact that that was their first step after their salvation was to follow God in baptism. And to, to take the steps toward being completely and totally obedient to Christ and everything that he says and does. And for so many of us, there's been such a time where we gave our lives to Christ. And now we sit here and we wonder what else is there really when there's really nothing else and we don't do anything else. And we finished last week with the song uh, about going through the motions, and we don't want to just go through the motions, but we want to give everything we've got to God and do it all. And my question for you, you don't have to answer this one out loud, but what did you do this week that you didn't do the week before that? Did you take that message home and apply that in some way that says to you, okay, I am not going to just go through the motions, I'm going to actually live my life for Christ this week? Because the message this week moves us to the next slogan in Sloganville, which we're going through. Right, D-Rock, you in the Sloganville? All right. Our next message tonight is very simply built off of the Lowe's comment. You got another commercial for Lowe's, Craig? Yes, Craig's way over there. Run us another commercial. We make sure we see this logo. As they all just kind of freak out and go, dude, really is asking for a commercial right now? All right, here we go. Hey. Oh, hi. You know, it's pretty quiet. I think I'm just going to take my lunch now. <coughs> How can I help you today? Oh, hi. Is this the right price on that lamp? It sure is. No way. No way. You can refresh your home with the same style of item as you'd find in a specialty store for a lot less at Lowe's. Oh. What'd you get at Lowe's? Uh, chainsaw. My husband's a logger. Lowe's. Let's build something together. Now, how many of you just are Lowe's people? Like, you love to go into Lowe's or even Home Depot. You know, we're not really pushing Lowe's tonight. We don't care which one. But you love to go in there and just look around at stuff you don't need, can't afford, and didn't, shouldn't have, but buy anyway. Anybody? Y'all just love it? I love going in those places and just looking at all the stuff. See, I'm, I'm an idiot, first of all, so I don't even understand the stuff. And the one thing in my world that I've ever built was this shed that I've told you about before that we won't go into that. But I did go into the, the, the store that day looking at, at all the things I needed and didn't have, like, barely even had a list. I'm like, oh, I'm going to need some of those boards and some of that junk and one of them there things and all that stuff. But what I've learned is when we start building something, if you're going to say tonight, let's build this thing together, let's talk about that. First, we're going to build our spiritual lives together and we're going to build XL together. First thing we have to understand is what are you building? When you walk into Lowe's and they say, man, I need some, you, you walk up to that somebody and say, man, I need some help. And, and you, you say, man, I need some tools. I need some, some wood. I need some whatever. They're going to say to you, what are you building? And if you say to them, I don't really know, they're going to walk away from you. Because there's really no reason for you to be in the store other than you're just a male and you have nothing else to do. So you're in there looking to spend some money that you don't have. Other than that, you have no purpose in being there if you don't know what you're trying to build. And you know, for, what, for us at XL, we don't have the purpose, we don't have the understanding of what we're doing here and trying to accomplish here if we don't know what we're trying to build. And one of the things that we've had trouble with over the years, and we've been going about three years now, and one of the things that we've had trouble with is that people have always asked us, well, what do you want XL to become? Do you want to be your own church one day? Do you want to be this or that? Or what are you trying to do? But I want you to hear something from, from God's Word that says what we're trying to do at XL. Because we can't build it together unless we know what we're building. Romans 15, 20 to 21 says this, My ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard, rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. I have been following the plan spoken of in the Scriptures where it says, 
Those who have never been told about him will see, and those who have never heard of him will understand. Listen, in case you wonder what we do here, our number one goal is to reach people for Jesus that don't know him. And one of the things that we struggle with is, is when you get to know him, and, and you're uh, six months down the road, and you come to Excel, and you begin to say, hey, Jared, you need to do this a little this way, and, and we need to do more for this because I'm not growing anymore, and I'm not developing spiritually anymore. And we've struggled with that for three years now because here's the deal. Our number one goal is to reach people that don't know him. So everything we do on a Sunday night, other than when we have talks like this, when we're doing the old family time, you know, and, and we're discussing what we do, everything we do is about finding people that don't know him and getting them into a relationship with Jesus. So when you do that, you can't always do both of those all the time. So some people have struggled and they've said, well, I don't, you know, this isn't for me anymore. But I want you to understand one thing about XL. As this thing continues, and we'll talk about where we're headed in the future in just a minute, but as we build this, you need to know that we are here for the person that does not know Jesus. So guys, any of you sitting in this room this, this afternoon that you've not started a relationship with Christ yet, let me explain to you, you're the reason we exist. All right, we're not here to have a little party among all the believers that have been believers forever, and we need another place to get together because we're believers, and we like to believe together, and we all get together. That's not why we're here. We can do that at any restaurant in town. We do that all the time because, you know, we're church-going people, and we eat everything all the time. That's not a big issue for us. We are here to help people meet Jesus. And that's our goal. So when you understand what I'm saying like that, and when you understand let's build this thing together, then let's build it together on the, the understanding, with the understanding that we're here to help people come to know Christ. So tonight, if you don't know Christ yet, we're here for you. I understand we're having the, the talk tonight, but we're here. The things that we do, the reason we do Pimp My Ride on stage is to show specifically what God can do with your life if you give it to him. The reason we have one car over here and bash the heck out of it all night, and then we have a brand new car over here and talk about trading in your life for what you've done to it, to what God can do for it, that's because we want people to come to know Christ. The reason that we do messages where uh, some crazy person is in a casket in the back of the room and is drug in here and sits up on stage and preaches an entire message from a casket. Anybody here for that? Anyone? I was here for that. It was kind of crazy. But here's the truth, guys. That message is not built specifically to help a person that's been a Christian 10 years be a better Christian. It's not built, that message was not formed around helping you do more for God the next day. That message was formed because at the last minute, what I did at the, the very end of that message is I said, because every person in this room one day will end up in one of these, being the casket that I was in. And my question was, are you going to be ready? After that, they wheeled me out of here, pulled me out of here. We had a song after that, and Mickey gave up and gave his testimony. We had six people come to know Christ that night. That's why we do what we do. And you need to understand that, because as we go and forward and build XL, we are going to build a ministry specifically to reach people that don't know Jesus. And you say, well, why do, you, why do we need that? Because we also are, are connected to West Rome Baptist Church. And a lot of people in the world that don't know Jesus won't go to a big building with a big steeple on top that calls himself a church. Some of you are in here tonight and you've given your life to Christ and you would never have gone to a West Rome Baptist Church or a Northside even or a, any other church, any of the Pleasant Valleys. You wouldn't go to those things. Hey, babe, how you doing? You wouldn't go to those things. We're having family time, so I figured I'd recognize my family. You wouldn't go to those places because you weren't comfortable there. So you came here. And you met Jesus here. And now what we begin to look at is, okay, what do we do with you and how do we continue to reach other people all the time for Christ? As we build it, you've got to know what we're building. And what we're building is a ministry to reach people that don't know Jesus. Now, can we grow in that? Yes. Can you grow in your relationship with Christ? Yes. Why? Because the deepest you've ever been is when you served the last person that you led to Christ. If you want to talk about, well, I want to learn more and grow more, and I want to learn more knowledge, all that is huge and important and, and very critical to your Christian life. But you're never any deeper than when you're leading someone else to Jesus. So we want to do all of that, because, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, because 
uh, that's just part of it. Uh, first thing you got to recognize is that our goal is to be a ministry that reaches people that don't want to go to another church and meet Jesus. Our goal is to reach people that, that, that know there's something better, know that in your life there's something out there that they don't have yet, but they don't know where to find it, and they know where they're not going to look. I've been at West Rome Baptist Church for seven years now, and you can't imagine the numbers of times in this town I've, I've so, told people that, and they're like, oh, man, I, I, I went there as a kid, and I'll never go there. And y'all have heard it. You've heard about other churches in town. And the problem is, if we don't do something to reach those people, they're never coming in the doors of our home to find Jesus. So we need to take our home someplace else and do something different for them. So as we build this thing, you need to understand that it's our goal to reach people that don't know Jesus. Number two thing, uh, the, the second thing we've got to know is, and you've got to have it, is you have to have a plan for how to build it. How many of you, have, how many of you just hate instructions? You, you're those people. All right, my wife's over here not raising her hand. Go ahead. How many of you just, you can't stand instructions? You, you'd pull anything out of a box and you start putting it together, throw the instructions to the side and just hope it works. I know y'all are out there. I know you're out there. Here's the deal. If you don't have a plan, most of your junk ain't going to work. And, and, and what you do is you put it together, and then you're sitting there with like four screws, two bolts, and, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff, and, and, and a tool sitting there going, I, I could swear they sent me this for a reason. And you have no idea why your grill fell apart. And you have no idea why whatever you put together doesn't work like it's supposed to work. Guys, when you understand that about Excel and the way we're trying to build this thing, we have to have a plan. I want you to understand Acts chapter 2 is the ultimate passage of Scripture that tells us what a church looks like. And you can call XL whatever you want. You can call it a church. You can call it a place. You can call it a group. You can call it whatever you want. But the picture of what we're trying to do is in Acts chapter 2, and it says this, all the believers devoted themselves. This is people involved in XL. You hear me? All the people that learn and, and run this thing and build this thing and then grow this thing devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. All right, number one, you need to understand that we will always be about the Word of God. I don't care if we're doing a pimp my ride. Somewhere in the Scripture, it talks about pimping a ride. Y'all know that, right? I know there's something in there that talks about that in Scripture. Doesn't matter if somebody's being pulled in in a casket. There's something in Scripture that we are going to deal with that night. Because we will never become a ministry that does not focus everything it does on God's Word. And we'll never become a group or a session or a whatever that is not based around what God is teaching us in his word. So we will always be committed to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. One of the things that we do is Super Bowl parties and Xbox tournaments that we've got coming up. I'll tell you about in just a minute. One thing that we, we will probably look to add in the future is, is something in the mindset of called an interest group, which means if you are heavily interested in motorcycles we may start a group for you to get together with your buddies or pals or friends and neighbors and and talk about the motorcycles you don't own because that's i would come to that group and i would talk about the one i don't have and all the dreams of which i still don't have anyway but we want to put you together with people why because we need to fellowship with each other we need to hang out with each other you need to know the people that sit over here all the time need to know the people that sit over here all the time. And the people standing at the door over there need to know the people that work at the coffee bar. If we're going to grow this thing and build this thing, we must know who each other is so that we can recognize that we're on the same team. When you're working together with somebody, you must get to know each other first or you will never accomplish your task. Uh, Taylor is playing all-star softball this uh, next week. And what we figured out last week is she had one practice, and we were hoping that was the only practice, but then one lady steps up and says, you know, our team, the girls don't even know each other yet, so they need more practice. Well, first of all, I hated that because practice was 10 o'clock Saturday morning. It was 4,896 degrees at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. <laughs> However, she was correct in the fact that these girls don't even know each other. How are they going to play ball together? That's exactly what we want to do at XL is as we build this thing, we want to make sure you are getting to know each other, fellowshipping together, hanging out together, doing life together in a way that we say it so that we can know exactly what each person's part is in building this thing that we're, that we're calling XL. Anybody got a phone call? Just checking. 
But the first thing they did was that they committed themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, which, me, which included, by the way, for me and Mickey's sake, in Scripture, the sharing of meals. That is important. And then it says, and to prayer. And I want you to, to, to follow me in this. I want you, if you're going to be a part of what we're building here at XL, I want you to begin praying for this ministry all the time. Instead of coming here on a Sunday night going, man, I hope they got all this stuff done and ready to go and whatever, I want you to spend quality time praying about what XL is doing and what Craig is doing, what I'm doing, what the leadership in all these different areas is doing and taking care of and how our children are working and preschoolers are working. I want you to pray about this ministry specifically. Because if we're going to build it, we've got to pray about it. As we build it, we need to know what we're trying to build, what we're trying to accomplish, and we need to know the plan. The plan is we're going to stick with God's Word. We're going to make sure we're encouraging each other and loving each other and fellowshipping together, getting to know each other, and then we're going to pray like crazy. And I, don't think, I, I think a lot of us probably just kind of hope XL happens and hope some people show up, and we don't take it to the Lord in prayer like we need to. So my, my challenge for you is to find ways to be praying all the time about what's going on there. Uh, as that goes, it says, A deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like a group of people that enjoys coming to what they're coming to. And I know that sometimes on Sunday afternoon you're laying on your couch and you wake up at like 4.30 and you're like, dang, I don't want to go to that place. I know that sometimes you struggle in here because it's summertime and you'd rather be at the lake, but you don't have a boat anyway, so you're just mad. And you're like, man, if I had a boat, I would not be here with you people. But guys, what we have here and what we have in the scripture is a group of people that love being together. And they didn't want to miss a Sunday night, if you will, because they knew that their brothers and sisters and people that were going along with them were all about it. And they were going to be there with them to make it happen together. They didn't skip it. They didn't miss it. They would sell things they had to make sure everybody else was taken care of. They would give up their own possessions to make sure you had your possessions. Because they knew that it was family time. And they knew that they had to do what they had to do to make the ministry happen. But listen to the last part of that verse. It says this. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. What is our number one goal here at XL? People what? People getting saved. All right. He just told us your number one goal is people getting saved. If you'll do these things, I'll bring people to you. If you'll stick to God's word, if you'll stick together, and if you'll pray like crazy, I'll bring people into your presence, and I will save them, and people will join God's kingdom and be saved. We'll reach our goal if we work our plan. Third thing is this. You've got to work together. Guys, we've got to be on the same page. I know that Satan, this is one of his favorite things in the world. If he can make this section over here not like this section over here, he's just destroyed part of what XL can do. If he can make you walk in the door and look at somebody else and go, man, they're dressed wrong, or they're kind of weird, or they're this or that. If he can make us do that with each other, then there's zero chance of us reaching the community for Jesus like he wants us to. We don't have a chance because we're not working together. I know that many of you have done projects and built things and worked with other people, and they don't do their part. You ever had that happen? Yeah, we must work together to accomplish the goal that he put out before us. It says this in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. It says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. Guys, here's the deal. If if you are more worried about what you're getting out of this than what other people are getting out of this, then we're starting to see divisions in our own group. And we can't accomplish one single goal when we got five different directions that we're running. (laughs) Randy just held up my time and I got two minutes left. Did y'all notice that? He doesn't usually do that. We can't accomplish one single goal if we're all running in different directions. 
And when you begin to say, well, I don't like this person, or this person didn't do it right for me, or this didn't do right, or I don't like the fact that, that we have this set up now, and this is kind of going wrong, when we get to that point, then it becomes about ourselves, and it's no longer about helping that person that does not know Jesus find them. And that's why we're here. So we've got to make sure we stay together and remain together. Here's another part of that. It says in Romans 14, 19 to 21, uh, it says this, So then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up. Don't tear apart the work of God over what you eat. Remember, all foods are acceptable, but it's wrong to eat something if it makes another person stumble. Here's the, the, the key to that. It's not really just about food. It's about little bitty things that we allow to come between each of us. It's about little bitty things that you say, well, I, I believe different than that guy over there, so that's putting a division between us. And what God teaches us is if you want to accomplish what he's called us to accomplish, you've got to be together. If you're building a house, because some of you have that ability, I do not, other people do. If you're building a house and someone walks up and says, I'll help you, and they start building a totally different kind of house, they're not helping you because they're not on the same page as you. And if they're not on the same page, then you cannot accomplish your goal. So we've got to work together. Last thing is this. Each person has to do their part. We have way too many times where we're looking for workers. We have, we have a children's ministry upstairs that we look for workers every week trying to get people to go up there and help out. And some of you are gifted in the area of working with children, and you don't want to go up there. And I realize this message sounds like it's being harsh to everyone here. I don't, it might be harsh to people that are listening to it on the Internet because they didn't make it tonight. That's okay, too. I don't, I don't know what God wants to do tonight, but I do want you to know that you're here on purpose. You're not here to sit here and enjoy Excel each week. You're here because God put you here to do something on purpose. I'm going to show you that in Scripture. It says this in 1 Corinthians 12, 4. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Then I, next, it goes down a little bit in verse 11. It is the one and only Holy Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. The human body has many parts, but the, body, but the par many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Guys, what Scripture is teaching us about how we get involved is that if you come here at XL and you've decided now that XL is your place and you're going to come here and get everything you need, but you're not putting in any effort. I'm not bashing anybody. I'm giving the whole message tonight. But if you've decided that XL is about you, you've lost the vision for XL. If you've decided that, man, that Jared needs to preach a little longer and teach a little more stuff because I need to learn some more stuff, you've just lost the purpose of XL. Because XL is specifically here to reach people that do not know Jesus. Now, we got a lot of churches in town. we got West Rome that we're connected to. we got a lot of places that you can go on a Sunday morning and go as deep as you want to go. Wednesday night, we got different things going on, all kinds of different options for you. We have some small groups that we've done in the past, and we'll do some stuff in the future dealing with that. We'll do kinds of things to help you grow, but your number one growth output here is to serve other people. And the number one way we grow is to make sure we're about others and making sure other people come to know Jesus Christ. That's what we do here. And once we get to the idea that XL is about me and I hope they do things right for me tonight and I hope the music's right for me tonight and I hope the sound's right for me tonight and, I, man, I hope that slushy machine's working for me tonight. And once it becomes that, then we've lost the vision for XL. And, and Craig and I were talking just a few minutes ago about how many people invited someone tonight. I didn't spend my whole week inviting people to Excel tonight. And I don't know how many of you did. I don't know what you did with your time this week. But Excel is about reaching people that don't know Jesus. And if we don't bring them, people that don't know Jesus won't come here. Because they don't know what we do. They still drive by thinking we're a cell phone company because we're connecting people. And they're like, hey, that's a pretty cool. What if I can get me an AT&T phone in there or whatever? And we're like, hey, no. Well, if the price is right, you have mine. You know, it's not a big deal, whatever. We'll sell you whatever you need. But the truth is, people don't come to things like XL if people that are at XL don't bring them. And if we don't invite them, they're not coming. 
And you need to understand that the reason we bring them is for them to meet Jesus. So as we look at this and as we build it, there, those are the things we've got to recognize. What are we doing here? Why are we doing this? Colossians 1.18 says, Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. That means that this body of people right here, the people that do believe in Christ, you are the body of Christ. I don't know if you've heard the analogy or not, but each of us are part of that body, and we make up the whole body, which means all of us have to do our parts to make the body work. Because if you have parts of your body that don't work, then you don't work like God created you to work. So when we begin to look around and think, okay, well, these people have been here forever and ever and ever and, and don't do anything or haven't served in a position or have decided that, man, Excel is just for me. I'm going to come enjoy myself and let you guys do all the work. You've lost the purpose of Excel altogether. Excel is a ministry to go and get people and reach people. We're not a ministry to come through every Sunday and enjoy ourselves. It's about other people. So the challenge for tonight is, is I think, pretty clear. And um, hopefully... Hopefully you understand my heart behind what I'm saying to you, but when I look at, at where we are today, I look at we've had anywhere from 300 and something plus people in this room to where we are tonight in people in this room. We need to understand what we're trying to accomplish. And we need to back up and focus everything that we have on what God wants to do at Excel. And here's what we're going to do. Next week, next week I'm gonna, uh, we, we will talk specifically about how to go get people and bring them here. We'll talk about how you can invite them. We'll talk about why you should invite them. Our, our, our deal is a cell phone company next week's a theme, and it talks about your network and having the largest network in the world. And I'm going to ask you next Sunday night what you're doing in your network of people to bring people to hear, to Excel to hear about Jesus. That's what we're going to talk about next Sunday. The following Sunday is July the 5th, it's holiday Sunday. We will not meet at all that Sunday. So we will spend one Sunday telling you how to invite people, and then we will not be here the next week. Because we have a plan. And we're good like that. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that Sunday off, and you're going to go to the lake, and you're going to enjoy yourself in the boat you don't have, and you're going to swim around in the lake. And, and you're going to enjoy the 4th of July weekend. And the next week, we start a series called the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And that's the 12th, right? Yes, Jared, that's the 12th. Thank you very much for paying attention. The 10th, we're going to have an Xbox tournament right here, and it's going to be an ultimate fighting Xbox tournament. And we're going to spend every minute that we can spend in the next two weeks after Sunday, we're going to talk about how to reach people, and then we're going to spend two solid weeks trying to get people here for that tournament. Why? Why do we do that tournament? Well, because somebody likes Xbox, and it's just a cool thing to do. No. Why? Because we have nothing else to do on a Friday night. We thought we'd just jack around and come have a tournament. No. Why do we, anybody know why we would have a tournament like that? Get people in here for what? Man, Dennis, thank you for being the one that's paying attention to me back there. We're, we want to get people here to help them meet who? All right, if we're going to get people here to help them meet Jesus, we're going to have a tournament if it takes a tournament to get them here. And then we're going to start a series, and we're going to put an ultimate fighting championship ring, chain link fence in this building. My goal is to have Craig fighting somebody before it's over. I don't know. I think Gina wants to take a piece of him. Chris is ready. He's ready to jump in and fight somebody. I don't care what we have to do. We're going to spend those weeks, and we're going to do as, everything that we can do to get people in this building to tell them about Jesus. So what I want you to do is I want you to recognize that what we're about is helping people find Christ. Helping people start that relationship with Jesus Christ. And I got to tell you, I don't know if you have, you know, an understanding of that or whatever about why we would do that. But if you, if you know Jesus, you should understand why you should be helping other people find Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, you need to understand that we work really hard to help you find him. And if you want to meet him tonight, we'll stay a lot, as long as you need to stay to talk about it. Because that's our number one thing that we do. But as we do that, you recognize that we're here to help people that don't know Christ to find him. We now know the plan of how we're going to do that. We now know the, the people around us and how we're going to work together to make that happen. 
But the thing we got to do is we got to recognize that XL is not for us. It's for those people. And if we're here without those people, we're wasting our time coming here. So our goal by next Sunday night is to bring people with you to get them in these seats. We'll talk next Sunday night about how we're going to reach even more and more and more people. And then we'll take that week off. The next Sunday, we will kick it in gear and we will have as many people as we can have. Why do we want a lot of people? Because we want a lot of people to meet Jesus. That's our goal for that night. Guys, I appreciate you being here tonight. I appreciate you being here for family time. And um, I'm just excited about the opportunity that we have in the future to see what God wants to do with us. My challenge for you this week, recommit your life to Christ and tell him you'll do anything in the world that he wants you to do to, to, to reach people for his kingdom. It's not really just about growing XL, I can promise you that. It's not about building this thing so we can all feel better about it. It's about growing his kingdom and seeing him do what he wants to do. Guys, that's the challenge this week. Make sure you understand what we do. Make sure you understand what God's called you to do in your life. Make sure you understand it for the purposes of finding people and helping them get to know Jesus. If we do that, he'll grow, our, he'll grow his kingdom. He'll use some of us to do it. But he'll get the benefit and the blessing and the glory all the way through. All the glory for him. Guys, let's pray together and our band's going to close us out with one more. God, we love you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for giving us an opportunity even to be a part of something like XL. And I do pray tonight, God, that you have reminded us of what we're here to do, what we're here trying to accomplish, and that you and you alone will be the one that gets the glory and the honor and the praise for what we do. God, we give it to you tonight. And I pray that you will show us every step we need to take to be everything that we're supposed to be for you, God. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. <laughs>